ever since this COVID-19 mess, it's been the same old thing. It's like everybody's on this cruise ship stuck in their room. School's been canceled for weeks, bleak. They emerge just to work some more or to work out and uh, just eat, sleep, repeat. It's tough to be a theater kid right now, but hey, this project's pretty neat, especially since it was made by Mrs. Stevens and Miss T. Nee. But um, we can't meet up in person. So we'll have to do the next best thing. You gotta be in the Zoom where it happened, 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 the Zoom where it happened. You gotta be in the Zoom where it happened, the Zoom where it happened, the Zoom where it happened. Looks so tedious, but it ain't all that bad. You better watch my signal on your picture, my leg. A chat room where it happened. For now, I'll meet you in the Zoom where it happened. Oh gosh, more work tonight. At least I know that after it'll be all right. Click Zoom, let it happen. I've got to be in the Zoom. I've got to be, I've got to be in the Zoom. Click Zoom. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Olm's Advanced Musical Theater's class production of Stranded Views from Quarantine, produced by various reputable playwrights and compiled by stage partners. Today, you will get a view into the world of quarantine through the eyes of quirky characters stranded on a cruise ship, stuck at sea. Quirky? I'm not quirky. Yeah, wrapping myself in toilet paper is perfectly normal. Totally. So please, at this time, make sure your cell phones are silent. Hold on, that doesn't apply on Zoom. Uh, make sure your feet are not on the chair in front of, wait, that doesn't make sense either. Um, there's no eating in the theater. <sighs> you know what, forget it. Have your cell phone near you, put your feet up, have lots of snacks and enjoy the show. During the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic, the world stopped moving. People were controlled by the whims of an evil virus. Our story takes you to a cruise ship, stuck out at sea, in which the character shows a whole other meaning to the word, stranded. Hey, hey, have you seen my watch? It's one of those fitness ones that counts your steps. Real chunky, bright blue band. And I know you're gonna say it's in my room somewhere, and it has to be in my room. I mean, it's not like you've been ashore recently. But uh, the wristband, it gets a little itchy sometimes, so I tend to take it off. And, and I do like to walk on the ship. I mean, at home, I would like to run because I'm actually training for a marathon, half marathon, canceled now. But uh, did you know that you can't run on the ship, like anywhere around it? Like even before the quarantine, did you know that? You can't run on boats. It's like a law or something. So what am I supposed to do if I can't run? I'm gonna walk, that's what. And, and the ship staff or the captain or whoever, they say it's okay to go outside as long as you don't, you know, interact or touch anybody, right? Six feet, right? And you know, everybody's just afraid to go out of their cabin, so I pretty much walk anywhere and it's fine. But do you know how the average person only does 10,000 steps a day? You wanna know what I do? I do 10, 20, I do 20, 20,000 every single day. And you know how long it's been since I missed a day? Four years. I can actually tell you the exact number of days. Just, just hold on, there's an app on my phone that actually says it. Whoa. 1,499 days. That's my streak. If I don't find my watch, it's going to break. It's going to break my streak because there's no, there's no other way to make my steps in there. And I know 1,500 is just a number, but it's 1,500. And if I don't find my watch, my steps don't count. If my steps don't count, then I don't have a streak. And if I don't have a streak, then what am I even doing here, huh? Just wandering around. What am I supposed to be then? The official cruise ship ghost? Haunting the hostess of third day Harry Potter character? <sighs> Sorry, I'm just a bit the street, you know? This place does feel haunted sometimes. Do you ever feel that? Like when I'm walking out on the deck, I can hear these voices, people talking or crying or something singing. I can never tell what they're saying though, or I can never see them, or why they're crying, what, what they're talking about. Ugh. This ship is spooky. This whole, I don't even know what to call it. The situation is spooky. It's like very act one of a zombie movie. And I don't even like zombie movies. Oh my watch, my streak, my 20,000 steps. I know it's dumb, but it's normal. And I need normal. And I also need my watch. It's chunky and blue. Uh, I stole this. I I'm trying not to steal everything right now because I I'm changed, I am. I just feel a little depressed and I think to myself, Maybe I'd feel better if I had your watch. I, don't worry. Uh, 
it's fine. My hands are clean. Um, it wasn't even a real wash. I, I wonder if she knows. Maybe I should tell her. Look, I'm going through a hard time right now. Just leave me my little vices. You don't need that coat or that leather handbag or that chair. My wardrobe has doubled in size. You can see people about to say something when they see me in their clothes, and then they don't. Don't want to get too close, maybe, or maybe they just didn't need it as much as I needed it. I, I need it all. Give me all your everything. Who knows what tomorrow brings? I was doing really well, too. I was calm. I was, you know, not stealing things. I, I had a whole program growing, and it was going really well, too. And you know, life likes to throw curveballs, and I was never good at baseball. I stole home once, and they asked for it back. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know that was a bad joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, we all lose people. I just want something in return. And yeah, overall, in bulk, it may not make me feel better. That's okay. But it also makes me feel a little good at first. And, and that's the problem, isn't it? Because I, I feel, I feel so bad. I hate myself for taking it, but also, look at this. Isn't this pretty? And, and, you know, I might not like it as much as I did today, but that's okay, because tomorrow I can find something else. And look at you. You got all sorts of nice things, don't you? Just don't look away for too long, because I'm going to take some of those things. <laughs> relax, relax, it's fine. You don't need any of it. I need it all. All of it. It's a beautiful night. We're looking for something dumb to do. Hey, baby. I think I want to marry you. Is it the look in your eyes? Or is it these dancing shoes? Who cares, baby? I think I want to marry you. Hey Josh, it's Jamie. Just calling you back after our last convo. <sighs> Cause I figured you wanted an answer. Sorry, that was awkward. And just so you know, I'm healthy, not infected. They'll let us off the ship in the next week. That's the rumor anyway. You were right, cruises are terrible. Having a terrible time. If you went on one, you'll be one on one for weeks with no end in sight. During a pandemic, which is terrifying. Well, I feel like I should dress the elephant in the room. The, you know, reason I'm calling? Because <laughs> I know you're waiting for an answer. So here we go. The answer is, I think so. Now, I know when someone proposes to you, you're, sp you're supposed to say yes, yes, a thousand times yes. And I know that we've been dating for 10 years and this has been on your mind, our minds, for a while now. And I guess in a way, this is the best time to get married. It's the end of the world. We have to be in isolation. We should do it together as a unified friend. Love is a battlefield. And I love you. I love you. <laughs> I just think, I just want you to know why I hesitated. Okay. Okay, first of all, it's not really the end of the world. It's just a very scary time. And the world's not really ending. It's just a very hard and scary time. And if you say you want to go skydiving and you want to go skydiving now, just because you didn't know if the world's going to be around and you're advised against that, because how well trained is the pilot? Are parachutes even being tested properly right now? And furthermore, does your skydiving instructor have COVID? Because in all likelihood, you'll be way strapped, way closer than six feet apart. And I just read a tweet that a whole aviation school in Alabama, everyone was infected. So if you told, if you asked me if I wanted to go skydiving, I would say no, because I did the research and I know the risk. And I think the question, should we get married, deserves, you know, research and thought. I realize that comparison doesn't really work. I mean, both require a leap of faith, one literal, one a metaphor, and they both require a parachute, so. <sighs> Never mind. Never mind. It's me again, the magnificent Mysterio. Mysterio, Mysterio, Mysterio. 
Day four at sea and they canceled all public gatherings. You don't know what this means to me. I am a cruise magician. I should be I should be out there doing magic, but I can't do magic without an audience. I was so excited to be here. Six months of cruising around the Caribbean, performing for all different types of people, from the retirees to the elderly to the grandparents. I never thought I'd be quarantined in my room with the coronavirus. I just thought we'd be like every other cruise ship and get the norovirus. Hello, sir, madam. Do you like magic? I want her to think of a card, any card. Got one? Good. Was this your card? No answer. When I, when I strolled on doing this for people on the Lido deck, they were erupting applause. I give up. I can't do this anymore. I stopped calling me Mysterio. My real name is Ned. I'm 28 and ago. I still have student debt from going to theater school. Magic gave me this confident alter ego, this persona, because I had a hard time connecting with people. But I never, but I never felt that confident. I was looking for validation. Boy, it feels good just to be honest like that. Wait a second. I think, wait. I think I just made my ego disappear. That might have been the greatest. That, that might have been the greatest trick I've ever did. This has. To, uh. <laughs> I was so good. Summer after fifth grade, when we first met, we hang out in my basement to Radiohead. Never planned that one day I'd be losing you in another life. This video is for Tommy. Tommy, hello. Miss Montgomery, hello too. I don't know if you're still monitoring Tommy's email, but if you are, hello. This is Eleanor. You know me from childhood and stuff. I'm still on the boat, but we're not moving anymore. And my room smells like potatoes, but that's my fault because I spilled mashed potatoes on the floor. They, they said they can't spare anyone to come clean it up, which is understandable, but I still wish it didn't smell like potatoes. <sighs> So the real reason I'm sending you this video is to tell you that I will obviously not be returning from the boat in time for prom, which means we can't attend prom together. And I wanted to give you permission to ask Jessica to come because it seems you really want to go with her. Miss Montgomery, don't worry. Your son is not a cheater. We are not dating. There are no romantic feelings between us. None. Seriously. But yeah, I can't go anymore. And you should still go and with someone you want to go with even if that person is Jessica. Jessica's fine, sorta. Sorry, I'll edit that part out. Yes, go to the prom with Jessica. She's great. You guys really seem to have the hots for each other. I see you guys together all the time, especially after band. You guys seem to have connected since you switched to bassoon. So you can ask Jessica to prom if you want, and I will release you from our prom pact. I feel like I'm saying the word prom a lot. Do you ever just say a word, like a whole bunch, and it doesn't even sound like a word anymore? Prom, prom, Tommy prom. Sorry, I guess the boat's getting to me. Boat brain. So real quick, I should go, but if you don't go to the prom with Jessica, or if the prom doesn't happen at all, we could have like our own little prom in my dad's basement or something. Remember when we used to rollerblade down there? We could do that too. <sighs> so I should be going, but just think about it. No pressure. No, th just think about it. I'll talk to him. Bye, Tommy. Bye, Miss Montgomery. Bye, Tom. I already, I'm going to start over. Hello, my name's Jacob and I'm a sportsaholic. I mean, they my life. No sports, no me, and now they're gone. This was supposed to be a dream vacation for me and my friends, but we all decided to get different rooms and that came back to bite us. This was our junior year of college, spring break. This is supposed to be memories that last a lifetime, and now, and now we're gonna make those memories, just not the happy, fun ones we expected. We've been trapped in our state for weeks now, and there's no end in sight. I feel trapped, like I have no say in anything. No, no human communication, no sunlight, and most importantly, no sports. No sports. <sighs> So, I had this dream last night, 
there I was announcing game seven of the NBA Finals. It was like my dream job. Philadelphia 76ers was Utah Jazz. Joel Embiid had 40, 48 points and had the ball up by one to crunch it. He's dribbling up the court. He's dribbling. He shoots. And then I woke up. Oh my God. That was amazing. Maybe I can recreate that same type of moment with like a basketball on a trash can, have that type of fun. Ooh, Joel Embiid going to the basket. He makes a move. He shoots. He scores. Oh my God. What a play. What am I doing? That's not even fun playing with a ping pong ball. Hey, have you seen Team Ping Pong recently? They suck. Like, what is Team Ping Pong Patriots doing? They took Mason May in the draft. Like, why would you take Mason May? Why can't they more, be more Team uh, 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 Charger? Team Charger, yeah. They took Sam O'KC. Great pick. That's how you do ping pong. That's how you do ping pong. Just every time I talk about Team Ping Pong Patriots, I get all worked up. I can't. I'm just, mm. Hate ping pong. I got I gotta go detox and just listen to Mike Shot Sports podcast. I can't keep talking about this. I can't keep doing this. Goodbye. What's up, guys? It's your girl Tiana. Welcome to welcome back to my channel, Tiana. Links will always be in the bio for my social media. The reason I'm on this cruise is very simple. My mom and I want to get away from all this coronavirus drama. Besides, this cruise was planned way before this outbreak. I mean, way before. This is supposed to be a big family spring break cruise because the coronavirus ruining our trip. Most of my cousins did, so that just left me with one cousin left. We haven't seen each other since we boarded the ship. It's day three, and I feel like I'm going to lose my mind. I've been cooped up in this room since I got here. I was really looking forward to the team club. I hope to spot someone tall, nice looking. Anyways, you guys came here for my quarantine outfits, which I won't be wearing anytime soon. Outfit number one is this cute camouflage sweatshirt that I wore when we first boarded the ship. And I paired it with some leggings and uh, some camouflage shoes. All this, this outfit number one is from Old Navy. Outfit number two is this cute 78 shirt that I also got from Old Navy. And the pants that I'll be wearing up under it is biker shorts. And the shoes are these cute, diverse Converse that can be worn basically with any single outfit that I have on here. So, yeah. And this last outfit that I was planning on wearing today is this party dress for the party on the deck, but unfortunately, that won't be happening today because of the coronavirus, as you thought. So, and then the shoes that I'll be wearing are these cute Nike low tops. And yeah. So, I have really hoped to just hopefully go out one day like today for the last day and just have fun and <laughs> maybe get some fresh air but yeah thank you guys so much for watching make sure you like comment and subscribe my social media links will always be in the bio and i will see you all in my next video Mwah. peace why are there so many songs about rainbows and what's on the other side Rainbows are visions, but only illusions, and rainbows have nothing to hide. So we've been told, and some choose to believe it. I know they're wrong, wait and see. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. Hey, everybody! Miss you back home? Miss you? We barely recognize you. Yeah, the sea's been rough on me. My eyes have turned googly. I've sprouted fuzz. I seem to be made primarily of textiles. 
You wouldn't think life on the ocean would turn a man to tech house. Let's look at me. I'm your worst dirty laundry nightmare. I'm your laundry come alive. Hey, hey, who's behind me? I'm your handler. Get it? Handler? Yeah, yeah, you're a comic genius. Do you mind? I was telling the folks back home about my transformation. Nice. Becoming single was the best thing that ever happened to you. If you were still a pair, I'd be wearing you. If you were a pair of socks, you would be on my feet. You know, you should really laugh at my jokes because I literally bought you to wear. I could do whatever I want with you. I could throw you out of this porthole. No, you can't. It doesn't open. It doesn't open? Seriously? You know that. You know everything that I do. Yeah, I do. Nice bit. I appreciate your efforts, but we're trapped here. Not forever. Feels like forever. I'm talking sock! And I'm talking to a sock! Yeah, well, who else you got makes complete sense? But what if they never let us leave? I can't get out of here. I'm trapped here with my awkward kook self. And don't tell me that there is an opportunity to make lemonade out of lemons because there is no redeeming fruit in any of this at all. I agree, I guess. We just gotta roll with it. Roll with the waves. Feel them? Feel the waves? Beneath us? Rolling. They just keep going, don't they? Yeah. No one tells you how small these rooms are. I can't just turn around without bumping into the bed. And the toilet doubles as a shower, which is good because we ran out of TP days ago. I don't even know what time it is anymore. I used to have this intense, pressing OCD. Need to know the time all the time because of my Apple Watch but I dropped it down the porthole. And they got eaten by a shark. There are lots of sharks out there. They just keep circling. It's like they know we don't have long. Someone said there were nurse sharks and even when nurse shark stomachs were empty, they're harmless. But I don't know who to believe anymore. The tour group from Idaho took the mouse hostage yesterday. The costume, not the kid who plays him. At least, I hope the they let the kid go, because I think they're planning to burn the mouse in effigy. They're probably going to shut the ship on fire, but we're surrounded by water, so we should be all right, right? I've been spending my time meditating. There's no TV, and I've read all the People magazines I stole from the store. I feel a little bad for paste, for cutting them out with my cuticle scissors and pasting them on the wall with toothpaste. These are my friends now. Megan, Dolly Parton, that one TV show host, Harry. I feel really close to them. I wrote them a song last night after eating old mushroom pizza and getting high from food poisoning. <clears throat> It's a tragedy, not to have an exit tragedy, just a menagerie of people magazines to love. No one ever let me sing before. Probably a good thing. Oh, what's happening? The nightly wilding. See, I'm sheltering in place. But the Idaho group, they went barrel fast. Grabbed the finger paints out of the daycare, got down to their skivvies, painted each other wild colors. I hope, I really, really hope they don't make me walk the plank like they did the group from Florida. Oh no. But you don't understand. I'm not one of them. 
one of the, you know, the unwashed, uncared for, the weak of immune system, and overall, gross. The unlimited buffet hogs, the, ugh, what's not to understand? I'm going to be absolutely fine, absolutely fine. I got every vaccine on time. I go to the doctor once a year on precisely the same day for an annual checkup. I eat an apple a day, slurp clear broth once a week, and squeeze my own oranges for juice in the morning. I exercise three times a week using a regime personally tailored to my body's unique needs by a trainer from the School of Physical Perfection at an Ivy League university. So this quarantine, it is just ridiculous. It is not meant for people like me, people who take health seriously with a capital S, people who show their bodies the care and, and, and even overcare, too much care. I probably care too much for my body, think too much about it and the point is, I don't belong here. I am not a quarantine type of person. I am above the need for quarantine. And I was not stealing anything. Those rubber escape boats, those are for everyone, for general use. Like, uh, like a water fountain at a public park. But I mean, of course, I would never actually use a water fountain from a public park because of germs. And who knows if the water has been sterilized properly? No. I only drink the best Perrier all the way, baby. None of that LaCroix knockoff water or Brita filter stuff, no. The best Perrier all the way, all the time, all the how, uh, all the... <coughs> that, uh, that was just a small aberration. Just a small aberration. <coughs> no, 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 no cough here. Just something stuck in my throat, probably a piece of raw carrot. I only eat my veggies raw to preserve all of the vitamins and the health benefit nutrients uh, and... and <coughs> <coughs> so, as I was saying, any chance there's a spare bed in the nurse's office Hello, tonight? are you there? I keep seeing glimpses of you out of the corner of my eye. A flash or a flicker, a sense of something nearby. A friendly presence, at least, I hope you're friendly. I've been cooped up in this room for 12 days and you haven't been unfriendly yet, so I'm going to be optimistic. The other day, was it yesterday, two days ago? What is time anymore? My watch was missing and it was besides my table. And then this morning it was on top of my closet. Was that you? Are you playing games with me? I noticed you the second night of quarantine. The Wi-Fi was out, I was freaking out. I had nobody to contact you or nobody was telling me anything. My chest got all tight and I couldn't breathe, I couldn't think. And everything was spiraling out of control. I was so alone. But I felt a presence. I looked up, I couldn't see anybody. But I felt you, and I knew I wasn't alone. I knew that at least somebody was here for me. I've been too nervous to talk to you. What if you would float away and I never got to feel your presence again? I think I'll call you Clarice. My little ghost companion, Clarice. It's nice to meet you. I wonder how you got here. Oh God, did you die in this room? In this bed? People just die on cruise ships, they just toss them overboard. Did they toss you overboard, Clarice? Are they gonna toss me overboard? Am I gonna die on this cruise ship? Is that why you're here, Clarice, to let me know that? I don't wanna die on this cruise ship, spending my last 20 hours in a 20 foot square room with crappy meals delivered to my door and I'm talking to a ghost. This room is basically a coffin, isn't it? So much for, so much for a nice total trip to the Bahamas. I can't believe I spent my last credit card points on this. You know what? You're right, Clarice. It's fine. I'll be fine. I'm young. I'm healthy. I don't have to worry about this. No worries. Just boredom and talking to ghosts. Keep finding my watch and I'll keep finding it. And I hope you come back with me to the real world. The real world. What even is that anymore? Is this real? Are you real? Am I real? I'm alone in the universe, so alone in the universe. Who knew that I'd be stuck on this ship? No one notices anything. 
Not one person is listening. I'm scared. I just don't know what to do now. Cause I have wings. Yes, I can fly around the moon and far beyond the sky. And someday soon you will hear my plea. One small voice in the universe, one true friend in the universe, who believes in me. These were Flintstone vitamins, and they were expired, but you can't really tell the difference. Why am I taking vitamins at the end of the world? Because they're multi-purpose, and I may need their magical properties on the other side, like the coins the ancient Greeks would use to place a dead person's eyes so they could pay the ferry to Toman across the river. Sticks. Coins on the eyes of the dead. It's grim, but I like it because it's a plan. Plans are good. It's like the ancient Egyptians mummifying their dead so their bodies could be preserved for the next world. Actually, that's really smart. That's what I'm gonna do. Except instead of cloth, I'm gonna use the rarest and most valuable commodity in our society, TP, the chosen paper of the porcelain gods. Consider this my last message, my last dialogue with the world. Except for a dialogue, you need more than one person, and it's just me. So I don't know what you'd call this. Monologue? No, that's not right. Someone is receiving this, right? There's someone out there. I know you can't respond, but I know you're there, and that's somewhat comforting. Yeah, it's totally comforting. At the very least, someone will find this recording and know I existed. A digital time capsule, if you will. But what's left to say? I detected every single person in my contacts, and I sent them a very simple message. You're welcome. Nothing specific, just you're welcome. It took me 78 minutes. Most people were confused, some didn't respond. No, it's, it's understandable. Others took it as an opportunity to engage, but a lot of people got it. They responded back, thank you? Thanking people is important. Maybe the most valuable thing that we can leave behind. So, a simple gesture of kindness and gratitude. So to anyone out there who finds this, you're welcome. And if you need a white, feel free to unwrap me. Now it's time to disappear. For now. So, uh, I'm a kleptomaniac. Like a for real one. Not like, oops, I stole a pen from Sandy's desk, lol. Ugh, I'm such a klepto. Nope, I have a legit diagnosis and everything. I steal stuff, it's just, uh, sort of what I do. Why? <laughs> I have no idea. It's not because I get any kind of a rush from it, or because I can't afford what I'm stealing. It's just because I, uh, I know want to. No, 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 scratch that. I need to. So, uh, yeah. My therapist was not super excited for me to go on this cruise, but I was like, hey, whatever, man. What do you know about my life, man? And he was like, literally everything. And I was like, good point. So I decided to go on the cruise anyways, thinking I could handle it. But then on the first night there, I stole 13 forks, three spoons, a bottle of sunscreen, and this really crummy watch that's either super expensive or it's from Walmart. I don't really know and I don't really care. Did it make me feel any better? No! Stop asking dumb questions. You're clearly missing the entire point of mental health. And then we all heard about this quarantine, the announcement on the loudspeaker, the meeting we all had to go to. It was weird. We were hearing about the super contagious disease while we were all packed in together like sardines. Dumb. I saw this magazine from a lady's purse while she was talking to her husband about their kids. She had like four of them and I guess she was worried. <sighs> uh, I guess it really wasn't a big deal until we all got masks and gloves and people started crying and calling their families and stuff and I was just like, well, crap! And then I went into my desk drawer and I saw the stolen junk I had and I was like, what am I doing? So I texted my therapist and I was like, I'm in a weird situation. I'm going to return stuff to people. And my therapist was like, that's really good, Alex. And I was like, I don't know. I felt.
felt some sense of uh, relief, I guess. You know, because I steal stuff as a compulsion and it never makes me feel any better, but this made me feel, I don't know, happy's not the right word. This made me feel calm. And I never feel calm. <sighs> but so anyways, I decided to return stuff to people. So therefore, I kind of like reverse stole it. <laughs> I don't think anybody cares, but I do. And if returning all this stuff to people does some good instead of bad, then <sighs> I guess I did something good. Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to talk to my therapist about this. Provided I don't get the coronavirus and keel over and die in three minutes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Except no. I'm not kidding at all. So yeah, that's it. Your eyes have appeared to go unnoticed But I've got it all here in my heart I want you to know I know the truth Of course I know it I would be nothing without you Did you ever know that you're my hero? You're everything I wish I could be. I can fly higher than any law. You are the wind beneath my Never, never would you believe you'd ever hear the words I'm about to say. But it's so easy to say them now that I can't actually see you. I wonder why. I, anyway, since I can't talk to you right now, that means I have to try to telepathically send you what I'm feeling and hope that mother-daughter connection comes through. Not that we're usually connected. I've been too busy for that. Too distracted with other things I thought were more important too selfish. But every time I've needed you, you've always been there, so here goes my best try. The day I departed for this cruise, I pushed the pause button and escaped from my captives. My AP courses, finishing my senior year when everyone should know that we've all checked out by spring break. And you. And I was looking forward to freedom. So why is it that these things I was happy to temporarily leave behind are the things that I want the most now? And I'm now held captive on a ship with a lot of people I don't even know. So here are those words, Mama, and I hope you can feel them. What I want is you. I want to be home. I gladly accept you kicking me out of the kitchen because I'm in the way more than I'm helping. And I would give you a personal invitation to embarrass me by joining in with my friends like you usually do when we start to spontaneously sing and dance to our favorite song. I want to laugh with you even though what you think is funny is actually corny. Like when you told me about the ever pretentious Mrs. Gold trying to introduce Mr. Pleabody, a guest pianist who was about to play for a crowd in church. And instead she said, and now Mr. Playbody will pee for us. I was too cool to laugh with you. But then you started laughing and I couldn't hold back as much as I tried. I missed your laugh. When I get home, I want you to repeat every annoying cliche that you've ever said to me because they're already playing in my head right now. Worrying will never change the outcome. Put your positive pants on. Will this matter a year from now? I never admitted it to you, but I kind of like those cliches. I even find myself repeating them to my friends. But for some reason, I can't tell you that. Sometimes when I want to say the right thing, I don't. There is this stubborn thing inside me that I just can't always say what I mean. But right now, while you're not here, I want to say this. And I hope wherever you are right now, you can feel it. I'm sorry I've never told you just how proud I am to have you as my mother. I love you. Now I know why all the trees change. I had 
the best day with you today. This started out as a vacation. The first one since the twins were born. They're four now, so you can imagine. It was a getaway we were longing for, and now we can't get away from it. Having twins was a test for our marriage. Now lock yourself in a cruise ship cabin with your spouse for longer than expected with no access to a tiki bar? <sighs> That's a test. We FaceTime the kids every day. My mother has them. Thank God. Imagine we had hired a babysitter. But still, a long weekend is one thing, and 14 days is a whole other thing. My mother is 68. Four-year-olds are so much work. They wake up in the middle of the night to go potty or because of a bad dream or it's just a snuggle next to you. And I miss my babies. I'm going crazy. No, I am crazy. They don't understand why we aren't back yet. It, explain quarantine to a pair of four-year-olds. Explain that we have to stay on this boat and not get off. And that we aren't sick, but we can't get off. And that we might have it, but don't worry. We don't have it. When we FaceTime, the kids cry, then I cry, my husband cries, my mother cries, and my poor mother is left with them crying. She has to answer all their questions at bedtime. She has to tell them that we don't know when mommy and daddy are coming home, then deal with the fallout. She tells me not to worry, that things are going to get better, that I need to stay strong, that, that the kids are all right. My mother is still being my mother and a grandma. I feel like I can't breathe. The virus is making me this way and I don't even have it. I don't think. Palamon, are you there? Don't make me yell. I'm, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be quarantined in my stateroom. I'm ready to jump. I was a championship diver, sort of. Third in the Mora, Minnesota League. There were four of us. But I can do this. Just swim by and I'll catch you and I'll hold you and I'll feed you fish for the rest of your life. Or rather the rest of my life because you're a god and will live forever and unfortunately, I won't. Pelmon, I saw, I saw you in the tiny window. I saw you swim by! You and a whole bunch of your dolphin friends. It's called a pod, right? And when there's a flock of dolphins, you're in a dolphin pod. Well, I'm on this pod, see? This humongous pod. They call it a cruise ship, but really it's just a virus ship. And I'd rather not stay any longer. Palamon, please come back. You're sworn to protect anyone on a sea journey and I need protecting. I need to get off this pod! Oh, come on! You can at least be impressed that I know my mythology and which god to seek. I bet you thought you were forgotten. Well, I'm gonna tell you a secret. I think you're hot. Not just cute, but blazing hot. Like, you could be on one of those fireman calendars, you know? If you come closer, I can tell you some more secrets. Fine! Betray all you stand for! If I am left here to die, I will make sure I badmouth you all over social media! Fake god! Imposter! I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that. I'm just scared. And I need you to come for me. So I can escape this death ship. I hear the crew. Palamon? Come up for air! Palamon! I think I see you! Yes, I see you. Ready or not. No, I didn't. I swear I didn't. Yes, you're right. I had no rights to touch your possessions. I get that. No, please don't. You don't have to call anybody, the captain or the purser or whoever. I, I can explain. Take a second look in your purse, please. Yeah, see, it's your wallet with all the money in it, identification, everything is there. I get how you're confused. Yes, I know that you've been searching for it. I know because 
I took it. I stole your wallet out of your purse three days ago. <laughs> and you had no idea it was me because, well, I'm pretty de decent at my job. And cruise ships are pretty easy pickings. <laughs> Crazy. The first time I get caught, just now, I was actually trying to give you your stuff back. Okay, I get it. You have to call somebody. I won't try to run. Where was I going to go? Just for the record? <laughs> I'm sorry. I know it really put a black mark on your vacation when I stole it. I'm sure the, the theft along with the quarantine made this a really bad trip for you. Like I said, sorry. Why? To tell you the truth, it's a living. I'm not very proud of it, but it puts bread on the table. And like I said, people on cruise ships. Oh, you mean, why was I trying to give you your stuff back? That's an even tougher question. I wasn't planning on it, not before the quarantine. I mean, I've got kind of a system that I've developed. Contacts at the ports, ways to fence the stuff so it doesn't hang around for long. It's a business, sad as it sounds. That doesn't answer your look. Why don't you just go ahead and call somebody? We don't need to stretch this out. Yes, I gave everything else back. You were the last one. I'm clean. You were the last one. It was because I began to feel like it, you know? I couldn't keep taking stuff. I couldn't unload it. This quarantine made me stop and look around and sit. People are scared. You can see it in their eyes. This unseen thing, this virus. I mean, they don't know if it's going to get them or if it already has. I mean, they were trying to go to someplace, you know, sunny and carefree safe and now all of a sudden this thing snuck up on them i couldn't shake feeling like look i steal stuff for a living i used to and i found a way to be all right with that other people had more than me they didn't need what i took from them i made it right in my head but having the time to look around at the people i couldn't shake feeling like, couldn't shake feeling like I was a sickness myself. And I couldn't live with that. You're not going to call? I deserve it. Are you sure? Okay, I will. Goodbye. I will. I'll keep my hands clean. You want, you better run, you better do what you can. Don't want to see no blood, don't be a macho man. You want to be tough, better do what you can, so beat it. But you want to be bad, just beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it. No one wants to be the feed. Huh? What's that white light? Man, it's nothing. Showing how funky and strong is your fight. It doesn't matter if you're wrong or right. So beat it, just beat it, just beat it. Hold on, I was recording. Oh, shoot. Oh, technology these days is always so irritating, especially on this boat where we can't do anything anyways. All because of this virus, can't go nowhere, can't talk to no one. I don't even know the first thing about this tech junk. Hey, Sonny, come on. You're fixing to talk to your mama. She's got to be worried sick knowing you're sitting here on this big boat. I mean, you do have me and all, and I'm very great. But that's not the point. Get over here. Boy, I know you're not on that phone screen again. I'm over. Over here reminiscing about the good old days of Michael Jackson, trying to talk to your mama while you over there sitting there wild gagging on your screen. Nah, I'm fairly certain me and your grandmama did not take you on this trip to be wasting away like a bunch of bad apples. Because, you know, back in my day, we didn't have Goo Goo, Insta Ounce, Chat Snap, Fork Knife, and all these other doohickeys and devices. You know, if you wanted to play, you played outside, not online. If you wanted to eat, you ate your mama's cooking, or you didn't eat at all. And the only number my parents called was the amount of seconds I had left to go up the stairs and clean my room. All this COVID-19 mess should be a reason to get your butt outside and not put your face in front of the screen. Huh? What's that? Your pops is hard to hear, so keep, speak up. 
Boy, you know I do not tolerate you talking back to me like that. Go sit down somewhere and read a book. No, 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 don't, don't cry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. It's just, you know, never mind. Come here, sit by me. Let your pops talk to you for a minute. You know, kid, I'm sorry about what's happening right now. It's just, your mom's far away, your grandmama's is sick, and your pops is having a hard time right now. But you've been a real trooper, you know that? You haven't even complained. But you know, you can talk to your pops anytime, right? Yeah, of course you can. Now, do you forgive your pops? All right, now let's go watch some television. TV? Whatever, them kids shortening everything these days. Can't keep up. Oh shoot, I forgot about the recording. Fiddlesticks. Hi, this is Eleanor Acklin calling from the room 9255. I'm sorry to be bothering you again, but I was just wondering if you had any updates. Yes, thank you. But I knew all about that. The capsule was quite clear earlier, and I'm up to date on the virus information and quarantine details. I'm actually looking for a menu update. Yes, the menu for dinner. Well, according to the itinerary, tonight is formal night, and usually the quality of the meal reflects the quality of the attire. And let me tell you, I am wearing a lobster-worthy outfit. You see, I never got a Marshall because I hate waiting in line. But something told me that if I went there, I would find Of course I understand the severity of the situation, and it is not my intention to waste your time. Oh, I get it. It's a pandemic. And we're in quarantine, and for our own safety and the safety of others, we do not have access to the ship, and we must stay in our cabin. But I'm going crazy. Crazy without sunlight, crazy without human companionship, crazy without anything to look forward to. So forgive me for clinging to the small joys of a cruise life that I still have, because I should be going to the new collector's Thomas T.K. Thomas Selma Art Gallery, or playing bingo in the Sphinx Lounge, or giving a live acupuncture demonstration in the Royal Promenade. But instead, I get to watch the life and legacy of Thomas Kincaid on my television and play online bingo on my phone. I'm so sorry. I'm so, yeah, I, I, I'm safe, I'm healthy, I have unlimited Wi-Fi and a free movie package. Can you forgive me? Thanks. And again, I'm sorry. Four more nights. Good morning, everyone. It's me, Miss Biedermeyer, and I'm here to give you an update on our big class trip. Now, as you know, the class cruise to the Grand Tucky Basin was supposed to happen in six days, and though the authorities have canceled all classes this week, I'm here to tell you not to worry. Classes are only canceled this week, and I just heard that there have been no traces of the virus in Grand Tucky. So pack your things, okay? Because this trip will most definitely happen. All right, everybody, I'll see you now. Hello, everybody, it's me, Miss Biedermeyer. You've probably heard by now that the authorities have canceled school for the next month, and that includes all class trips. Yeah, I know this is really hard, but there's gotta be something we can do. Come heck or high water, we're still gonna have the best class trip ever, okay? Stay strong, everyone, I'll see you soon. Ahoy, mateys, it's me, Captain Biedermeyer, and I have good news. Our class cruise is happening right now. Yeah, I know we're not allowed to leave our houses, but we can use the magic of the internet to have our own virtual cruise. Here's our cruise ship. Isn't it beautiful? And look at all the other interesting and worldly passengers on the ship with us. Hello, children. My name is Mr. Paws, and I'm from a nation with different costumes than yours. Wow, Mr. Paws, we just love your accent. Oh my goodness, there it is. The beautiful Grand Tucky Basin. It looks even better in person. Hey, everyone, let's get a selfie. Boy, am I tired. Let's all turn in for the night, everyone. Thanks for helping me make this the best class trip ever. See you soon. Well, everybody, I hope we're doing okay since our virtual ship was quarantined. Apparently, Mr. Paws was infected with the virus. So, just to be safe, I rounded up all the other passengers and set them on fire. I know this is really hard, but we're Americans, dang it, and we're going to be just fine. Before we know it, everything will all be back to normal again. I'll see you soon, okay? Adios. Did you hear that beautiful ocean breeze? Listen to those exotic walruses. Can you smell that salty seawater? Oh my gosh, it's President Abraham Lincoln. It's an honor to meet you, Mr. President. Hey, everyone, the president says it's okay if we all go for a swim. Come on, everybody, the water's fine. Everything is just fine. This is the best classroom ever.
If you need me, call me, no matter where you are, no matter how far, don't worry, baby, just call my name, I'll be there in a hurry, you don't have to worry, cause baby, there ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough, ain't no river wide enough to keep me from getting to you, babe. This will all be over soon. Don't worry, time will pass, this will end. And in the meantime, we're all in this together. We really hope you enjoyed the show.